This is the asset basic reward suit tutorial presented by the SHRDB. We reference international ESA level chemistry by Lori Ryan or Roger Norris. So, hello, this is we start with the learning outcome of further aspect of equilibrium. So, we explain the term pH, pKa, pKw, which is an proof of water. We have calculated the concentration, the pH value of strong acid and weak acid. Explain the choice of suitable indicators for acid based titration. Describe the change of pH during acid based titration. Explain these changes in terms of um, strength of, of um, uh, acid and basis. Explain how buffer solution control pH describe and explain the uses of buffer solution including HCO, TLA, and hydrogen carbonate and calculate the pH of solution giving appropriate data to show the understanding of concept of solubility product. We have um, calculate the solubility product concentration and vice versa show um, understanding of um, common ions so all this so this is um, the different the chapter so we first start with this part and then the latter part is going to be solubility product and partition coefficient so you can start so let's start with ironic product of water <coughs> we need to know that what water is capable of doing a slight decomposition so water binds with water to produce hydrozonium ion plus hydrozonite ion so or you can simply give so this normally you so you are supposed to have hydrozonium with two water molecules why hydrogen is going to be together to enter to produce hydrozonium ion and hydrozide water this is the acid form and this is the base form but usually it's written as hydrogen ion water converting to produce hydrogen and hydrozide ion now if you calculate the equilibrium product of this reaction you need to see that kc is going to be the concentration of the product which divided all times zero divided by the concentration of the reactant but you need to know that concentration of water is going to be given as one with other concentration of um, of soft solids so concentration of water is given as one when you have this concentration you see that the kw which is the ionic product of water is actually going to be given to be given as this but now you need to know that what ionic product of water have a 290 kelvin is given as 1.00 times 10 to the power 14 negative 14 more squared gm cube negative 6 depending because when you multiply the more plus gm cube ultra is going to give you this unit so now we need to know that what in water we have equal concentration as you can see here when water decomposes we are going to have equal concentration of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion so hydrogen is going to be equal to hydroxide ion so the kw is going to be hydrogen ion squared so if you want to find hydrogen ion actually it is equal to the concept is going to be equal to the square root of the kw since it's square root of kw it implies that the concentration of hydrogen is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the power negative 7 more per gem cube. Now, when you have the concentration of our hydrogen ion there, you are now capable of calculating what is called the pH. The pH is just given as the negative log of concentration of the hydrogen ion concentration. So, if you do the negative log of this, or negative log to the base 10 of concentration of, of hydrogen ion concentration, if you do this, you are going to have 7. So, from there, you see that the reference neutral pH is given as 7. And when you do 7 plus 7, you have 14, which is the basic pH. When you completely subtract, you have 0. 0 is the complete acidic pH. So, now let's see some solution having different pH. Example, hydrochloric acid with 1 mole per dm cube. The pH is 0. Stomach juice. Inside your stomach, you have hydrochloric acid, which is concentrated. There is no as highly concentrated as 1 mole per dm cube. So you are going to have one to two um, point zero. When you have lemon juice, is um, two point three as acid. You have vinegar is three. Coffee is around five. You have rainwater is five point seven. Saliva is six point three to six point eight. Fresh milk is around six point five. Pure water is seven point zero. Sea water is around eight point five. Milk of magnesia is ten. Soapy water is eleven, and bench of sodium hydrate is fourteen. So these are the different points to note. So now we need, as you can see here, this is a form of pH. pH is being equal to negative log of concentration of hydrogen ion concentration. So it is there to show the how strong um, hydrogen is present inside the solution. It's going to show the log there is in order for you to see how um, um, extensive hydrogen is present in that solution. So now in this case, we can calculate the pH of hydrogen ion concentration is this you just substitute the concentration of hydrogen you're going to see that the ph is going to be 3.27 
So now let's continue with the pH of strong solution, strong acid. If you want to calculate the pH of strong acid, you just need to calculate the pH, the, the concentration of hydrogen ion. So that's as easy as that. When you want to calculate the pH of strong acid, you just calculate the pH of hydrogen. An example in hydrochloric acid, if you have a concentration of hydrochloric acid, you need to know that one mole of hydrochloric acid is going to produce one mole of hydrogen ion. So it implies that 0 0.1 mole of hydrochloric acid is going to produce 0 0.1 mole of hydrogen, of hydrogen ion. Since you have 0 0.1 mole um, of hydrogen ion, you see, use this concentration. So you say negative log to the base 10 of 0 0.1 mole per gm cube concentration. So the pH is going to be giving you 1. So now calculate the pH of strong bases. Now in order for you to calculate the pH of strong bases, you need to know that you can calculate the corresponding P, um, pH of the OH and then you have you can use the ionic product of that at the KW or you can just say it is 14 because you've initially calculated the total pH inside water, inside the total um, basic pH is going to be 14. So you need to know that pH is going to be equal to 14 minus the pOH. pH is going to be equal to 14 minus the pOH or you can see use the ionic product as such. Uh, so the first method is by using ionic product. So you can say that the hydrogen concentration is going to be equal to the KW of water divided by concentration of the hydrogen ion. You know that um, at, to concert, at 25 degrees Celsius, KW is given as 1.0 times 10 to the power negative 14. Now in the concentration of hydrogen ion, in this case you have the concentration of hydrogen ion being 0 0.05. So you can calculate the concentration of hydrogen ion to be 2.0 times 10 to the power negative 13. When you have this concentration of hydrogen, now you can do negative log of concentration of hydrogen and we are seeing that the pH is going to be 12.7. That's one method. Another method is by finding, by saying that we can first find the concentration of hydroxide ion. So the concentration of hydroxide ion, you have it already here. You now find the pOH. The pOH is given as negative log of the concentration of hydroxide ion. And that pOH is going to be equal to 1.3. When you have 1.3 now, you can do 14 minus 1.3. You still have 12.7. So this method is an easier method where you use the formula pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So now, <coughs> the other method now is to calculate the um, pH of weak acid. In order to calculate, you, know, you need to know that weak acid here does not completely decompose in water like strong acid. So now, in this case, what is going to occur is that since it don't completely decompose, you are going to respect chemical equilibrium when you want to calculate the, concern, the concentration of hydrogen and thus the pH of weak acid. So now, so you need to know that the um, this um, equilibrium the equilibrium constant Ka is going to be given as the concentration of hydrogen and the concentration of the um, the ethanoid divided by in this case of ethanoic acid is going to be divided by concentration of ethanoic acid. So we have K is called an acid dissociation constant. K is called an acid dissociation constant at 290 Kelvin. The value of this Ka for dissociation of ethanoic acid is 1.74 times 10 raised to the power negative 5 so this value is constant for every acid so when you have that value that constant value now you can make hydrogen ion the, the subject because you need to know that both hydrogen ion and ethanoid are going to be similar in amount so this and this is this and this are going to be equal so you can put hydrogen ion concentration squared or divided by concentration of the um, ethanoic acid you multiply times the Ka and then you say that the final formula is going to be the square root of the Ka times the multiplication with this um, molecule. That's the formula in order to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration. So now let's visualize this point. So this is the hydrogen ion concentration times the, um, the corresponding conjugate base divided by the acid. So this is the pKa. pKa is given as negative log of concentration to the, the of concentration to the base ten of the K. A. So these are the points that you need to know. So you need to know that different um, different um, um, weak acid have different Ka as you can see here. So for weak acid, you see that the Ka is going to be extremely small for sulfur acid. So you cannot use it, really use um, Ka. For sulfur acid, can be a weak acid when it produces as such. For sulfurous acids, for sulfurous acid is going to be acid Ka. 
for all that metanoic acid love to see the benzoic acid all the carrying of them are there so now we have the other part now we have initial period if you want to calculate now the concentration of hydrogen you see that this year concentration is going to be equal to this year so this um the we have the concentration of hydrogen around divided by concentration of the corresponding acid times the ka so from here we are capable of calculating the the concentration of hydrogen so let's see an example calculate the value of the ka of methanoic acid solution of this methanoic acid and this has a ph of that so they are asking to calculate the ka so now you know the ph of methanoic acid they have given you the ph and they say that the ph is 2.9 from that ph you can now calculate what can now calculate concentration of hydrogen by saying it's going to be 10 raised to the power negative ph so you are going to have the concentration of hydrogen and when you have the concentration of hydrogen you can now use this formula k is going to be the concentration of hydrogen squared divided by hydrogen hydrogen a acid so now it's going to be equal to this and this you know you can put this the subject and now you can calculate now the ka as such here so now calculating the ph of a weak acid so in order for you to calculate the ph of weak acid let's take an example you calculate the ph of um, of 0 0.6 ethanoic acid so you need to know that the k of ethanoic acid has been given when you have this k you can just say ka is going to be equal to the concentration you use the formula concentration of the acid divided by that of the corresponding acid concentration of hydrogen and divided by corresponding acid so now from here you can calculate the hydrogen and concentration so you can calculate the hydrogen and concentration when you have the hydrogen and concentration now you are now capable of calculating the ph by saying that it's going to be negative log of concentration of hydrogen ion the next point here is going to be the use of indicators we need to know that indicators are um, substances that are going to change in color depending on the concentration of the hydrogen ion so example you have phenolphthalein phenolphthalein this is a molecule of phenolphthalein you need to know that in presence of hydrogen and phenolphthalein binds with the hydrogen to produce this molecule each year and when you produce this molecule with each year and each year you see that this molecule is going to be colorless but now when it binds with OH, let's say in basic solution, we now see that there is no H here and there is no H at this position. It's going to produce this molecule which is going to be pink in color. So that, uh, those are um, um, in cases of um, um, indicators. So the other indicators, you have methyl violet is yellow in low pH. So yellow in low pH, the pH range is going to be this one. And I'm going to tell you what is the pH range. Methyl yellow is red, the pH range is this one. Methyl orange is red in uh, and low pH, the pH is in that one. You can pause and see everything. So now the question is, what is the pH range? The pH range is the pH at which the um, this, um, these indicators can be used, where these indicators are functional. So this is what is called the pH range. So we need to know that what you can you can have different reaction with different reaction you can choose a particular indicator that's going to suit for that reaction. Example, in cases of a strong acid strong base reaction, in case of strong acid strong base reaction, as you can see here, you see that the pH is going to be very large. So the pH is going to be very large, and the middle um, pH range, the middle pH is going to be the neutral pH of seven. Since the pH is going to be very large, you are capable of using bromotimol blue or the, the, the um, basic, um, you, can, you are capable of using many basic indicators like phenolphthalein, bromotimol blue. And since the, also the pH is very large, you are also capable of using acid indicators like bromotimol blue and this is going to be yellow. So you need to know that you are capable of using basic indicator, you are capable of using acid indicator. So this actually, this so you can use litmus paper again even here because it is used mostly when the pH is neutral or has a very large pH range. So now we have now in cases where we have, um, um, so let's continue by seeing a strong acid weak base reaction. When you have a strong acid weak base, you can see from this graph of pH against the volume of the strong acid, you can see from this graph that the pH range is going to be much more down, so it's going to be um, much more down to 7, it's down compared to 7, so the pH range is much more 
um, on the lower part of serving so in this case in this type of reaction of strong acid weak base the best indicator to use are the acid indicators and the indicators with low ph range as you have seen here you've seen that there are different indicators with low ph range you have methyl violet methyl yellow and methyl orange or we also with bromophenol blue all of them have um, very low ph why those who have high ph are bromotimol blue so this is bromophenol blue this is bromotimol blue and this is phenolphthalein so these are high ph so you so you instead use it in cases where the ph range is high but here the ph range is low so you are going to use methyl orange methyl red and methyl violet other ones here now in cases of a weak acid strong base reaction you realize that the ph range is going to be located a bit up compared to seven so since the ph range is high the best indicator to use in this case are phenolphthalein bromotimol blue and um, uh, bromotimol blue and all that so in this other one weak acid weak base reaction you see that the ph range is actually very small so it's very difficult to identify this reaction with an indicator so if you want to use this type of reaction weak acid weak basis reaction it's very difficult to identify this type of reaction with an indicator because the ph range is extremely small so if um, you are not capable of finding so for this reaction we will not be capable of finding the neutral the exactly the easily find the exact neutral point so at this point so what do you realize the best way to uh, find this reaction is by using electroconductivity so the, this is another method so that so that when there is a slight increase in the hydrogen ion there is going to be increase in conduction so we can use electroconductivity to visualize this so now the next part in acid base this acid based um, uh, acid based tutorial you can see i'm going to see buffer solution and what are buffer solutions buffer solutions are solutions which are going to prevent uh, which are going to resist any change in ph and what are they made up of buffer solution are great they are made up of acid and its conjugate base or they are made up of weak bases and its conjugate acid so these are the things so example you have um, the so this we have sodium ethanol so it's going to split into that and we have also this this acid here you can now you need to know the mechanism of action of buffers so mechanism of action of buffers so how do buffers work so you need to know that when these are the two main reaction involved in buffer system so you need to know that this um, one and we have this one so example if you place now an acid in this buffer you see that hydrogen is going to enter into the mixture when hydrogen enter in the mixture is going to bind with this and then it is going to the the reaction is going to shift this reaction is going to shift to the left and then producing more of this and reducing the um, ethanoid ion so in this other circle the ethanoid ion is going to shift in this other side to produce more much more ethanoid and thus is going to um is going to reduce resist the change in ph so this ethanoid now it can be used again to bind to the to other hydrogen and thus preventing the change in ph so now if you buy if you use instead um, a basic solution let's say hydrogen hydrogen is going to be to bind with hydrogen and this is going to move toward the right this reaction producing more of ethanoid now since more ethanoid is going to be produced this is going to bind much more with high um, sodium ion and it's going, more, it's going to move to the left producing more sodium ethanoid and all that so now these are um, equation involved in buffer so now let's say um, calculate the ph of buffer solution containing this propanoid and this so you need to know that when to calculate this ph you just need to know the formula so when you have um, the different um, things you need to know that for this particular buffer solution you have a ka is equal to the concentration of this and concentration of that divided by concentration of the corresponding acid so now you need to know that what in this case so you are capable of converting this um, into this last formula and when you convert into this last formula you can have your ph so this is one step in order to calculate one method in order to calculate this but i prefer this simpler method the other simpler method is by using this formula so this formula the first formula is hydrogen concentration equals to ka times the concentration of the acid divided by the concentration of salt or you can say just that ph is equal to pka 
plus log of the to the base 10 of the salt concentration divided by the acid concentration that's the simplest formula so in this case you just say that ph is equal to negative log of this um, of this um, um, ka and then you say plus uh, you use the concentration of the salt what is the concentration of the salt here you say that it contains this propanoic acid and this sodium propanoic this is a salt here 0 0.8 more per dm cube of salt and 0 0.6 more per dm cube of acid so when you place all that you are capable of now having your answer so from here we say that um, the we finished with acid base equilibrium and now we are going to pass to the next part of the tutorial thank you